Within the framework of the two-day Forum 2000 conference in Prague on the 13th of October, stands with photos of political prisoners in Azerbaijan were exhibited. Forum 2000 is a traditional annual conference held to promote democratic values, human rights, civil society and religious tolerance. The current conference emphasizes the struggle for human rights and political freedoms. In this context, attention is drawn to the problem of political prisoners in Azerbaijan. The purpose of the stands with photos of political prisoners is to draw attention to the suppression of rights and freedoms in Azerbaijan through visualization. According to information, special attention was paid to the ongoing struggle for human rights and political freedoms at this year's conference. Organizers organized an exhibition dedicated to political prisoners in Azerbaijan. The exhibition consists of 11 panels, and these panels visually show the scale and severity of recent repressions against Azerbaijani civil society. Forum 2000 is an international platform for open dialogue on global issues such as democracy, human rights, civil society, and religious tolerance. Founded in 1996 by Vaslav Havel, Eli Weissel, and Yohei Sasakawa, this platform continues to bring together the world's leading thinkers and leaders to fight challenges that threaten global peace and democratic governance. In general, official Baku does not accept international criticism of persons known as political prisoners and considers it biased. Government officials declare that people in Azerbaijan are not persecuted for their political views and that all fundamental rights are fully guaranteed. Human rights organizations recognized 319 people as political prisoners in the country. 18 of the persons known as political prisoners are journalists and bloggers. Three are human rights defenders. 30 are members of opposition parties and public organizations. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken stressed the importance of Azerbaijan's compliance with its international obligations regarding human rights and fundamental freedoms and called for the release of those unjustly imprisoned. In response to this, the press service of the President of Azerbaijan said that President Ilham Aliyev said that attempts to interfere in the internal affairs of Azerbaijan under the pretext of human rights are completely unacceptable. The social media ads promised the young African women a free plane ticket, money and a faraway adventure in Europe. Just complete a computer game and a 100-word Russian vocabulary test. But instead of a work-study program in fields like hospitality and catering, some of them learned only after arriving on the steps of Russia's Tatarstan region that they would be toiling in a factory to make weapons, assembling thousands of Iranian-designed attack drones to be launched into Ukraine. Some of the women complained of long hours under constant surveillance, of broken promises about wages and areas of study, and of working with caustic chemicals that left their skin pockmarked and itching. To fill an urgent labor shortage in Russia, the Kremlin has been recruiting women aged 18 to 22 from places like Uganda, Rwanda, Kenya, South Sudan, Sierra Leone and Nigeria, as well as the South Asian country of Sri Lanka. The drive is expanding to elsewhere in Asia as well as Latin America. That has put some of Moscow's key weapons production in the inexperienced hands of about 200 African women who are working alongside Russian vocational students as young as 16 in the plant in Tatarstan's Alabuga Special Economic Zone, about 1,000 kilometers east of Moscow, according to an AP investigation of the industrial complex. The AP analyzed satellite images of the complex and its internal documents, spoke to a half-dozen African women who ended up there, and tracked down hundreds of videos in the online recruiting program dubbed Alabuga Start to piece together life at the plant. Russia and Iran signed a $1.7 billion deal in 2022, after President Vladimir Putin sent troops into neighboring Ukraine, and Moscow began using Iranian imports of the unmanned aerial vehicles, or UAVs, in battle later that year. The Alabuga Special Economic Zone was set up in 2006 to attract businesses and investment to Tatarstan. It expanded rapidly after the troops entered Ukraine and parts switched to military production, adding or renovating new buildings, according to satellite images. Although some private companies still operate there, the plant is referred to as Alabuga in leaked documents that detail contracts between Russia and Iran. The Shahid-136 drones were first shipped disassembled to Russia, 
but production has shifted to Alabuga and possibly another factory. Alabuga now is Russia's main plant for making the one-way, exploding drones, with plans to produce 6,000 of them a year by 2025, according to the leaked documents and the Washington-based Institute for Science and International Security. That target is now ahead of schedule, with Alabuga building 4,500, said David Albright, a former UN weapons inspector who works at the institute. Finding workers was a problem. With unemployment at record lows and many Russians already working in military industries, fighting in Ukraine or having fled abroad, plant officials turned to using vocational students and cheap foreign labor. Alabuga is the only Russian production facility that recruits women from Africa, Asia and South America to make weapons according to experts and the AP investigation. AP contacted the Russian Foreign Ministry and the offices of Tatarstan Governor Rustam Minikhanov and Alabuga Special Economic Zone Director General Timur Shajivaliev for a response to the women's complaints but received no reply. Bolstered by the foreign recruits, Russia has vastly increased the number of drones it can fire at Ukraine. Nearly 4,000 were launched at Ukraine from the start of the conflict in February 2022 through 2023, Albright's organization said. In the first seven months of this year, Russia launched nearly twice that. Although the Alabuga plant's production target is ahead of schedule, there are questions about the quality of the drones and whether manufacturing problems due to the unskilled labor force are causing malfunctions. Young African women are being duped into building the drones that Russia uses to attack Ukraine, according to our investigation at the Associated Press. Social media adverts promise a work-study program in Russia in fields like hospitality and catering. There's also a salary of more than $500 a month and a free plane ticket. But some of the women told us they realised after they arrived they'd be working in a factory to assemble thousands of Iranian-designed attack drones to be launched into Ukraine. We spoke to half a dozen women, some of whom complained of long hours under constant surveillance, of broken promises about wages and education, and of working with aggressive cramp chemicals which left their skin pockmarked and itching. They ended up in Russia after applying to a program called Alabuga Start, which recruits women from 18 to 22 from Africa, Latin America and Asia. The reason Russia is recruiting the women mostly from Africa is because it's trying to fill an urgent labour shortage. It means some of Russia's most important weapons production is in the inexperienced hands of about 200 African women who are working alongside Russian students as young as 16 in the plant in Russia's Tatarstan region. I spoke to one woman who said she was shocked to find out that she would be making drones. She said the chemicals she had to use to make the drone left small holes on her face because she lacked protective gear. Some women said they liked working at the plant and that the paying conditions were good, but others said they weren't paid what they expected and had to work very long hours. Officials from Alabuga and the Russian Foreign Ministry didn't reply to our request for comment. The programme said recently online that it had become more popular. 
That could be because it's trying to widen its reach by recruiting influencers to attract more women to make Russia's drones.